The US Army entered the Great War with no tanks or experience in armoured warfare. When the American Expeditionary Forces Tank Corps was formed in early 1918, it was equipped with French and British tanks. With plans to rapidly expand the US Tank Corps, with battalions training in the US, France and Britain, a large number of tanks would be needed. The Corps trained with the French Renault FT light tank and the British Mark V heavy. But with French production stretched to capacity, they couldn't hope to provide the US with the tanks it would need for the planned operations in 1919. As a result, the US negotiated with France for a license to produce the FT in the US. They also commissioned a smaller three-ton light tank from Ford and entered into an agreement with Britain to build a new heavy tank, the Mark 8. The American-made FTs were designated the Model 1917 six-ton light tank, and 4,400 were ordered, with deliveries set to begin in April 1918. The Ordnance Department finalised the M1917's design and contracted a number of private companies to build the tanks. Delays in production, however, meant that the first American tanks were only completed in October 1918, and none of the M1917s reached the Western Front before the war ended. As a result, the primary US tank of the war was the original French Renault FT. Revolutionary for its turret, which could rotate 360 degrees. The FT equipped the 1st Provisional Tank Brigade, what would become the 304th Tank Brigade, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel George S. Patton. The American FTs saw action for the first time in September 1918, at the Battle of San Miguel. 144 US FTs took part in the battle, and both tanks and crews performed well. The Five of Hearts, a 37mm armed FT, with the 344th Tank Battalion, took part in the Meuse argonne Offensive, and while making an isolated attack on German positions in support of bogged down US infantry, the tank was immobilised and its gun mantle jammed by enemy small arms fire. The tank's commander, Sergeant Arthur Snyder, recalled, my wounded driver kept filling pistol clips and I produced as much fire as possible with our pistols and the crippled 37mm. Three German machine guns were set up at very close range and just out of range of our piece with its limited elevation. The constant hammering of these machine guns at close range was terrific. The hinges on the doors could not stand up under it for long, but it was the mushroom ventilator on top of the turret that gave way. Luckily for Snyder, the German infantry made no attempt to rush the tank, content instead to pepper it from a distance, and they quickly retreated when men of the 16th Infantry arrived. In terms of protection, Snyder felt the armour plate on these old French Renaults was good, but when you came to close quarters, the splinters from bullets hitting around the vision slits did considerable damage. In fact, two of Snyder's drivers were badly wounded, one by bullet splash splinters to the face, and the other with a wound to the throat. The Model 1917 was manufactured by a number of companies, including the Van Dorn Ironworks, the Maxwell Motor Company, and the CL Best Company. Of the original wartime order for over 4,000 tanks, in total just 952 M1917s were produced, 375 of these are believed to have been equipped with the 37mm US-made M1916 cannon, while 526 were armed with the Marlin M1917 tank machine gun. The remaining 50 were outfitted as unarmed signals tanks. The M1917 has a number of small differences from the FT. Its exhaust is located on the left rather than the right side of the tank. A new US-designed gun mount and mantlet was used. Solid steel idler wheels at the front of the tank were used rather than the spoked type used by the French. Additional vision slits for the driver were added and a bulkhead sectioned off the engine from the cab. Like their French cousins, the M1917 was manned by a two-man crew, the driver and the commander who also acted as the loader and gunner. The M1917 also mounted a different American-made engine, a water-cooled four-cylinder engine, built by the Buddha Engine Company. Developing 42 horsepower, it had more torque than its French counterpart, but was no faster, 
with a top speed of just around 6 to 7 miles per hour. The tank weighed in at just over 7 tonnes and was 16.5 feet long and 7 feet 7 inches tall. Its armour thickness varied around the tank from 0.25 to 0.6 inches. That's 6.35 millimetres to around 15.25 millimetres, which was slightly thinner than its French counterpart. The majority of the tanks were armed with machine guns using the 30 caliber M1917 Marlin tank machine gun rather than the French Hotchkiss. The male or cannon armed tanks had a 37mm gun and more than 230 shells were carried for the gun. Perhaps the Model 1917's most impressive feat stemmed from a publicity stunt in April 1919 when an M1917 climbed Pikes Peak and mounted in Colorado. At the time, the road up Pikes Peak was said to be the world's highest motor drive. A single tank was driven up the mountain as part of fundraising efforts for the fifth and final round of Liberty Bond sales, which hoped to raise $4.5 billion in war loans. We'll have a separate video taking a look at this exploit at a later date. None of the M1917s reached the front line, but many were used as props to sell war bonds. In this photo dated April 1918, a platoon of M1917s is seen shortly after they arrived at Camp Merritt by train. They were about to be painted up in camouflage for a victory loan parade in New York. After the war, the M1917, along with over 200 French-made FTs brought back from the Western Front, formed the backbone of the US tank corps. In these photos, we can see several tanks taking part in a mock battle with supporting infantry at Camp Meade in May 1919. This photo shows men learning how to service their vehicles at Camp Mead in December 1919. By 1921, the tank corps had lost its independence and had been all but disbanded, with the infantry given control of the American Army's tank forces. A handful of M1917s were deployed briefly overseas with the US Marine Corps during the 1920s, but the M1917 was largely resigned to training as it became increasingly obsolete. They were finally removed from service in the mid-1930s, and when World War II broke out, the remaining M1917s were sold to Canada, where they were reportedly used to help train the Royal Canadian Armour Corps, before many of them were finally scrapped. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to check out our earlier video on the Ford Model 1918 light tank. If you enjoyed the video, please consider supporting us over on Patreon, there's a link to that in the description box below and at the end of the video. Please like the video, share it with friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.